Welcome, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, thank you for joining Austin Coming Together, aka ACT, the Austin Community Hub, and Kara for joining us in this month's Virtual Hub 101. Um, yay! <laughs> My name is Janelle Martin, and I am the hub coordinator with ACT. ACT is a backbone agency for collective impact, serving a network of nonprofit, faith based, public, and private member organizations. As part of ACT, the Austin Community Hub is a safe space to intentionally and thoughtfully engage disconnected families, individuals, in collaboration with our member base to securely connect community members to holistic services, such as career counseling, housing, continue education, and much more. Part of these services include informing our community members about the different organizations we work with, so we created Hub 101s. Today, we will be connecting with Kara. Their mission is to unlock the power and purpose within our community members and ourselves to achieve real and lasting success. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce you to Takora Martin and Joyce C. Black from Kara. They're going to be presenting on their organization. Let me go ahead and pull up your slides. All right, take it away. You're muted, TK. Thank you, Joycey. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Takora. Um, hey, they call me PK. Um, I am the manager of recruitment and admissions for CARA Chicago. I've been with CARA for 13 years now, so I'm going to walk you through our service delivery model, what it takes to be a CARA participant, our enrollment process, as well as the services that we offer. I have with me my dear colleague, Joycey Black, who can take it from here and introduce herself. A good afternoon, community. For those who do not know me, I'm Joycey Black. Uh, I'm a training hey, specialist. Hey, Joycey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm training specialist manager at Care Chicago. I've been here for three years. I've been in this position for one full year as of April. Um, and so I'm so happy to be here uh, to work with ACK and as well as accompanying Sakura and walking with um, her through the model and the things that we do at Kara. Cool. This is so weird. I will say this because I don't know who's on this uh, on the call. So Janelle, I can't see who's actually joining us. This is so awkward. Um, so hey, you guys out there, I wish I could interact with you because I'm used to seeing faces when I'm doing these presentations. So to not see faces is really, really strange. So if I'm looking kind of weird at the cam at the camera, just know I'm kind of like awkward because I can't see any of you, um, but I know you're out there. So hello, everybody um, out there in Facebook Live land. So we're going to get started. Um, Kara uh, is a workforce development agency, and what we do is put people to work, hence our hashtag or our let's get to work. What we do is get you to work, and I'm going to explain how we do this in the next few slides. Next slide, Janelle. As Janelle mentioned, our mission is to unlock the power and purpose within our communities and ourselves to achieve real and lasting success. One thing that has kept me at CARA for the past 13 years is our mission. Um, and when I look at our mission statement, what stands out to me is achieving, uh, is unlocking the power and purpose within our communities and ourselves. At CARA, we believe that we're just not here to help individuals that find us, but we also have to dig deep to do the work that we do as well. So we're unlocking the purpose within you and the power and the purpose within ourselves. I cannot do this work or no one at CARA can do this work without holding true to the mission because our goal for everyone that walks through, this door, through our doors is to help you all achieve real and lasting success. And that also means within ourselves as well. So Kara is real big on promoting from within. We're real big on setting goals for ourselves. We share everything 
I will say that Kara is Gaelic for friend. Um, so when you come to Kara, you're actually making a friend in us and we're finding a friend in you as well. And if you choose to come to Kara or you get to know us, you'll just see how friendly we are. And just a snapshot of our staff, we share everything. We share births, we share new houses, we share people graduating school, we share it all. So one thing I love about Kara is our ability to unlock the power and purpose within ourselves because it started with us. We couldn't do this work if we weren't right. So we do it with ourselves and we help you achieve that real and lasting success by unlocking your power as well. Next slide. Who we are. So Kara was founded in 1991 by entrepreneur and philanthropist Tom Owens. Rest his rest in peace, uh, Mr. Owens. Um, so Tom wanted to focus on the problem of poverty in Chicago. So you're going to hear me say throughout this uh, presentation, poverty. I want to make sure that everybody understands that not everyone that comes to our program is, has to be experiencing poverty. Although we know poverty does not discriminate, there's different levels of poverty, not everyone that comes through CARA is experiencing poverty. That is a huge portion of our population, but that might not be your circumstances. So if you're on this call, I don't want you to be turned away by saying we focus on the problem of poverty. We focus on the problem of underemployed, unemployed, anybody who is looking for work. What we do um, and what Tom wanted to do was prepare individuals for that real and lasting success on in life and a job. You're going to hear me say also throughout this presentation, real and lasting success, a holistic approach. So it may sound repetitive, but I'm going to tie it all together in the end, what we mean by real and lasting success. So what Tom did is he was an entrepreneur. So he used his network to actually hire individuals in shelters and recovery homes because he saw a need. Tom pretty much traveled the world. And while he was busy helping other countries, he realized like, hey, I'm over here helping other countries. While it is good to help the, the international level of poverty, he also wanted to focus on right here in Chicago. So what he did is he used his connections um, in those business meetings to say, hey, I know you have this opening. How about, how would you feel about interviewing and hiring this individual? Since Tom uh, started this back in 1991, 1991, it is our 30 30 this year. We have placed uh, 7,000 people in more than 11,000 jobs. We operate under uh, an $11.4 million operating budget, and we currently have 60 permanent staff, and that is across all of our, that is across our entire enterprise. And I'm going to tell you what our entire enterprise looked like for the new CARA Collective. That is, a, a, that is all together, CARA staff, Clean Slate, CARA Connects, and CARA Plus. But that's what, who we are. We uh, founded in 1991 to address the issue of underemployed and uh, unemployed. Next slide. So why CARA and why now? Looking at these statistics, that's a lot of people. Um, according to the Chicago's Mayor website, nearly 500, well not nearly, 596,000 individuals live at or below the poverty level. When you look at that, that's 20% of the city of Chicago. Um, so that's the, what we wanted to address. And how we do that, again, is by placing individuals in jobs. So some of our metrics here have been great. So when we place you on a job, the average wage of individuals that we place in employment, they make $15.77 or more. We all know that minimum wage in, in the city of Chicago is currently at $15. So what we do, again, talking about that real and lasting success, we don't want you to go in making $15. We want to get you at least a $15.50, $15.75, $16.50. So the average wage of people who we place in employment opportunities, they make $15.77 or more. One thing we also pride ourselves on is our ability to re uh, re retain their jobs after one year of employment. So when you come to care, we don't want right now success. We want that real and lasting success. So when we get you a job, we want you to keep that job. And people that come to care actually keep their jobs. Well, 70% of the people who we find employment for, they retain their jobs for one year or more, which is pretty good compared to the national average of individuals who get a job because some people are like oh i'm gonna get a job i'm quick 70 percent of our participants keep their jobs for one year or longer Kara also prides itself in our ability to put people in permanent housing or well we don't we're not putting them there but we're giving them the resources to actually be put into permanent housing we work with a lot of shelters and recovery homes and not just shelters and recovery homes um, one thing my mama always told me, and I'm sure you guys have probably heard this before, if your name not on the lease, you homeless. 
Um, so one thing that we also want to make sure that our participants are going into a housing that is their own. So after participants, you know, they do that we, after they get their job, some of them live in transitional housing. After one year on the job, 68% 68 of, 68 of the people who have been in a permanent opportunity have transitioned until they're, until, into their own housing, meaning they have a lease of their own, a light bill of their own. They're no longer living with mom or dad aunt or uncle. They're living in their own housing. So that's a good number right there as well. So that's something we also encourage participants to do is like, hey, lift yourself out of your current circumstances. Right now is right now, but long term, this is what you should be aiming for. Next slide, Janelle. So this is what I'm going to walk you through, the service delivery model. And we're going to move from left to right. So I'm going to walk you from the recruitment, the beginning end, all the way to the end to career advancement. Next slide. So recruitment, that's me. So as previously stated, I am the manager of recruitment and admissions. And how we do this is through community outreach. So right now, this is one thing that I'm doing, working through it with Austin Coming Together for community outreach. So I'm doing community outreach as well as referral partners. So we have referral partners such as Austin Coming Together, By the Hand Club for Kids. We work with Sister House, which is a recovery home. We work with churches. We work with probation officers. We work with anyone who needs a job and who is looking for employment. We also work with anyone who find us on their own and just say, hey, job, job search, uh, job agencies, and Kara name is going to pop up. So if you just Google Kara or places that can help me find work, Kara nine times out of 10 is going to pop up. So some people find us on their own, which is what we consider a self-referral, but we do community outreach, referral partners, and we're reaching and engaging people experiencing poverty. Again, there's that poverty word, but I want, don't want you all to focus so much on poverty if you are experiencing unemployment or underemployed. Next, we're going to talk about the leadership development. I'm not going to talk about that, but Joycey is going to talk about that. But the beginning stages is recruitment. So we do the community outreach. We welcome you in. We screen you and all that fun stuff. And next is what Joycey is going to talk about in this service delivery model. All right. Um, again, I'm Joycey, uh, manager of training. So uh, one thing I really, really love about CARE, I've been here for three years again, is we're not a job readiness program. When we approach training um, and everything else with the person, you're a person that comes in with a bunch of other characteristics and titles, right? And so we don't just give you a training and say, okay, we'll get a job because anybody can get a job, right? It's about keeping the job. It's about maintaining that job and having that long lasting success. And so in our training, uh, we offer hard and soft skills. And the soft skills is our specialty. So a soft skill is a skill that is um, a part of your characteristics that's innate. Right, so if you're caring, you're giving, you're nurturing, um, if you're a great organizer, people don't normally teach you how to do those things. Those are parts of you. And what we um, work with at CARA is showing those things. So that's that achieving, that's that developing our communities that we have in our mission, pulling those things out of you. And so in our leadership development, we, we offer this holistic uh, training and we call it transformations. And so in transformations, you will work with a trainer and we'll dig deep. Um, and the reason we dig deep, a lot of people you might hear say, what they got to do with getting a job, right? That's not going to give me a job. I don't need all that. I could just go out here and get a job. I don't have to go through all that. Um, and, but after going through the process, they're like, oh, I now see the whole reason of going through those things is because you're a whole, again, you're a whole person. You don't just go to a job and your whole personal life disappear and you don't leave your job and your whole job and those stressors disappear. So we talk about, we'll get to them later different uh, five workplace competencies. Um, and in those five workplace competencies, this is how you address the things that people typically quit for. Um, this is how you also get the promotion. And so Takora talk a little more about advancement later because we even want you not just to get the job, keep the job, become the manager of the job, run the place, own the place, uh, and whatever that looks like. And so the way uh, we do that externally is we also have other trainings and partnerships that we work with. So we know that it takes some skills sometimes um, to get some of these jobs. And so we work with individuals to help you get that OSHA certification. Um, if you wanna work in a warehouse or in a freezer or any things of that sort, we help with that financial literacy. How do you make savings? How do you repair your credit? Um, 
how do you change your life in that aspect? Front of the house certification. So if you want to work in a restaurant, now you're going in with a certification that puts you a leg up above someone else that's coming in that may not have quite a certification. Um, digital literacy. Maybe computers aren't your thing, but we're saying that's fine. Come just as you are. We'll start you from zero and we'll walk with you through the process. Everything from typing, um, building your resume, up to if you're looking for an administrative position, we start figuring out what training looks like to get your um, words per minute up. And, and then we had that certified logistics warehouse and transportation training. Um, you may have heard in other places as TDL, Transportation Distribution and Logistics. This is a partnership we also have with the Great Chicago Food Depository, where they offer you a forklift certification. Um, you get paid for the training. They offer you meals for the training. And we're um, a partner with them, so they look at our referrals first. So a lot of things come with becoming a part of CARA, um, especially when it comes to the training. So you come in, you say, I'm interested in this thing. We go through our portfolio and see what we have, and then we help you through that journey. Next slide. So while working and doing all of these trainings that Joycey just mentioned, you also will have the opportunity to engage in one of our business, business entities. I'm not sure how many people on this call are familiar with Clean Slate. Clean Slate is a social enterprise which is owned and operated by Kara. Um, it is a paid transitional job in exterior maintenance. We clean various communities throughout the city of Chicago, providing litter abatement, snow removal, landscaping. Um, we would normally be doing special events or festivals, but since COVID kind of shut all of that down, we also clean a lot of festivals. Rip Fest was one of our biggest festivals. Um, it's an opportunity for individuals to earn money right now. It is paid. Um, the interns or participants typically will work 25 hours per week, um, but while you are working at Clean Slate, you're still engaging in trainings with a Joyce's team. You're still engaging with our employment services team. You are still at CARA. This is just a bridge to permanent employment. It's not your job. It is your right now job right now, but it's not something that we want you to get comfortable in. In fact, we urge participants to not get comfortable at Clean Slate because some participants are like, oh, well, I work 40 hours this week at $15 an hour because we were short. I'm good over here. And it's like, no, that's not the purpose of Clean Slate. Clean Slate is meant to be a true transitional job, temporary employment to give you some work skills because we do have individuals who come to us who have no work history, spotty work history, a recent conviction, an open case uh, because they can't get hired because of an open case. So it's many scenarios of why people come to Clean Slate. And some people don't have any of those barriers. They just want to work while looking for a job. Because I know if I was looking for work and I could get paid while I'm looking for work, um, I'm, I'm good. So Clean Slate is our social enterprise. It is an outdoor job. So we do work seven days a week. Um, it's a lot of walking, probably up to five miles per day. But that's another business entity that Kara owns and operates. And that's some Something that you could do while actually working with our team to find you a job. And when I say working with our team, I mean just that. Um, because sometimes people come to Clean Slate and Kara and just think a job is going to automatically fall into their laps. Um, as Joycey said, like we have to put in some work. We're in partnership. So we're in partnership with Austin Coming Together. We're in partnership with you as an individual. We have to earn your trust. You have to earn our trust. We have to hold up our end of the bargain just as you have to hold up your end of the bargain. Because you know what they say, the, you, you have a better opportunity of finding employment if we was helping you and you was doing your own independent job search. So every participant that comes to CARA is encouraged to do their own independent job search while we are working with our companies to hire you as well. We also own and operate a staffing firm that is owned by CARA. It is a mission-driven staffing firm called CARA Connects that is dedicated to sourcing quality candidates to fill critical entry-level positions at leading Chicago area companies. Some of those companies is the Habitat, uh, the University of Chicago, also the WIC Food Centers. So we found that, hey, we were so focused on finding people full-time permanent opportunities, which is still good, that's still a goal, that we were leaving part-time opportunities on the table. So even you can work at Clean Slate, and some people, depending on your qualifications, can also work at our, at our staffing firm, Care Connects, while still looking for a job. So again, you're still getting money in your pocket while looking for a permanent opportunity. One good thing about 
uh, Kara Connects is too, that most of those opportunities go temp to perm. They end up being temp to perm or a long-term temp assignment as well. So you have the opportunity to go to that temp assignment, show up and show out. And they're like, hey, it was temp, but such and such decided not to come to work, back to work. So we need you to fill this role permanently. So some of the roles do go permanently, but that's another way to earn money, beef up your resume, get some skills, and I will say too, I want, I'm pointing at my screen like y'all see my screen. I will say too, Clean Slate, let's say for instance, I'm a Clean Slate intern and I'm working at Clean Slate. Care Connects needs somebody to fill a janitorial uh, opening at the Habitat for two weeks, three weeks. They can actually pull you from Clean Slate. You, you go work your temp assignment. If the temp assignment ends, your job at Clean Slate is still secure. And all while this is happening, you're still working with our training team. You're still working with our employment services team to find the ultimate goal, which is a permanent full-time job. So these are two ways, additional ways that you can engage with Kara and how we evaluate, and you'll be evaluated while you're in both of these opportunities. And on the next slide, Joycey is going to tell you about those competencies, but while you're working both of these assignments, we are evaluating you. You'll be evaluated every day at Clean Slate by a crew supervisor, and you'll be evaluated every day at Connects by your supervisor on your assignment. So let's say the supervisor at the WIC Center is going to send us feedback on your performance. We use this too as selling points because again, we're making you more marketable for employment. So we use this feedback to say, hey, when there's a permanent opportunity that opens up, we can say, well, hey, John has worked at Clean Slate. They've done a Connects assignment, especially for individuals who have no work history or spotty work history. And you have come to us and you did what you, you, you knocking everything out the, out the ballpark. We can take that and say, hey, this is why you need to hire this person because this is what they've done. And Joycey is going to talk about those competencies and how we evaluate you on those competencies on the next slide. All right. So these are our core competencies. You may also hear them referred to as our workplace competencies. Um, and so we didn't just, a lot of people are like, how'd you come up with these things? Right. These are five things. What do they even mean? And um, as Tokoro said, we've been around for 30 years. And in 30 years, we've been getting feedback from our employers. And our employers have said, those who have performed the best, who have promote, been promoted, or who have stayed on their job the longest, have been able to work on these things or have been able to achieve these things. So a competency is the ability to show something. So we want to know if you are able to show your teamwork, able to show time management, professionalism, communication, and conflict resolution. And so I'll break them down for you and what we look for while we're engaging. And as Takora said, you can do this on an assignment. You can do this in a training. You can do this when someone calls you. You can do this um, while you are working your route at Clean Slate. So every interaction counts towards these. It's not like you have to go sit in one place and somebody's like, this is the moment. Before, <laughs> it's just who you are. And so as you are, we don't also don't expect you to do everyone to do it one way. We're expecting you to show up as yourself and what teamwork looks like for you and a healthy team member, then that's perfectly fine. Okay, so like teamwork would be, so Corey and I work very closely. So I use this as a real life example. Um, and as you saw that service delivery model, she has recruitment and then you saw that training came very shortly after. And so I depend a lot on her, but she also depends a lot on me because when she goes out to these events and we're having, uh, we're talking about training, she could be saying one thing and I can be doing another, right? Um, and vice versa, when she's bringing people and she's like, this is this person and they're gonna be great. I'd be like, um, you sure? Um, that's not what you, you said. Um, and so we rely a lot on each other for that communication piece. So they tie it all together. So that teamwork would be, Takora's doing the thing that I know that she's doing and she works in her own manner. I now understand it. And so when we get participants and we engage with one another, the way we communicate, if something's not going well, we're able to have that conversation in a respectful way to make sure that our team stays cohesive. Time management might show up on, it's not just if you show up on time. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm always early to work. Are you early to work and then punched in? Are you early to work at your locker and punched in late? Did you go to the bathroom? Did you take too many smoke breaks? 
um, those type of things, that you turn the things that you need to turn in on time, so your deadlines. And so time management is encompassed beyond just showing up on time, but it's managing those breaks. It's communicating to your emails on time. It's returning those phone calls. All of those things play a part. And then your professionalism. I love this one. This is actually my favorite one because a lot of people think professionalism is you put on a suit and tie and you put on this voice that's also proper and that all of a sudden makes you a professional person. But what you're saying out of your mouth and how you're showing up, you're like, it don't match, right? You're, you sound like that and you look like that, but the way you're showing up isn't the same thing. And so uh, we talk more about that and what your work ethic is like. So what do people say when you're in the room, when you're leaving the room, or when they think about you? That's what your professionalism is. And we talk to that and that soft skill and developing your own professionalism because not everyone's going to use the word I'm reliable, right? It's going to be more things to you and what you are as an employee and a teammate that will make you a professional person. And then you have that communication piece. We've already talked a little bit about it, but are you communicating clearly? Um, and so when we say communication, we don't mean this really high level of big words, right? If you're very, if you're familiar with the artist T.I., right, you're not just throwing out this random word and that all of a sudden makes you a great communicator. It's you communicating your own way and making sure that it's efficient. So you're coming just as you are and we're talking about did you get the message across clearly? And if that happened, that's perfectly fine. And so we work together to develop what that style looks like for you so that you know that you're getting your needs met and that you're also meeting the needs of your employer and your team. And then last but not least, you have conflict resolution. Oh, we. If this isn't a thing, right? People quit their jobs for this thing. People don't want jobs for this thing. People don't want to be around families for this thing, right? Conflict happens, it happens. And it can take over your entire body, your way you think. Um, and so we, we talk about that. We talk about um, when you get into an interaction, what do you do in that moment? Because it all happens like that. And you can give your job away is the way I like to phrase it. You can say, here's my job because I'm going to do this thing that I know is going to get me fired. But here you go, you can have it. Or do you use a few of the techniques that we've been working through and thinking through the process? How can I get to a solution for us both? Maybe we won't be happy, but we'll both have a solution that we can move forward with. And so we then talk about different techniques to do that. And so we know that everybody comes in at a different level. People may have been doing this right since birth. They might be like, I spit these out like that. Some people are like, I don't even know what these words are. I've been doing my thing the way I've been doing my thing for the past few decades. Either way, we welcome you either way. And then we meet you where you are either way. And then we start addressing, right? Even moving from where you were to the next step. Let's say you are terrible at time management. Um, I'll take the follow on this one. I am in my personal life. If you say, let's go out a certain time, I don't get ready till about that time uh, because I think you're going to cancel on me. So if that's where you're starting, we then start talking about that. Why is that that way? How can we improve that? How is that impacting your relationships? And so then we start to work on that together and these core competencies show up in all of your interactions and that's how we're assessing. Just as you're coming, we're coaching throughout as well. We're not just like, mm, teamwork's not great, but they'll get there. We're having real conversations about what's going on. And then we're coming up with plans together. I'm not saying for you to be a good team member, you need to do this. You're saying for me to be a better team member, this will look like this for me. And then you have somebody such as myself or Takora and other staff to say, okay, let's work on this together. How, how do I support you in becoming a better team member or becoming a better communicator. And then we do that all together. Anything you wanna add, TK? Mm -mm. You covered it. I'm good, yes. All right. All right, so another uh, thing that Kara offers is coaching and supportive services. And jo Joycey mentioned some of this. While at Keras, and Joyce, he hinted to it. So we can get people jobs, but the, the goal is for you to be able to keep the job. And what I always tell participants is that life don't stop just because you come to Kara. Life don't stop just because you get a job. At any point, if anything, that's when all anything can break loose. Like that's when things happen. I always, always use myself as an example. Like no matter how much I coach people on, you know, showing up and showing out, like life is going to happen. I always tell people when they come to me, like my mama said, 
my mom's sick too. Um, and this is what I have to do to work through it. Um, I got child, children, I do too. And this is what we have to do to work through it. But as Joyce had mentioned, like we're going to work with you and not just turn our way, like figure it out. So your coach is there and your coach is essential. Uh, coaches are essential to a participant's care or journey. We call them IDSs, but an in, in individual development specialist. And we love using the word individual because it's individualized to you and what you need in that moment. They will get to know you as a participant, your goals, any barriers you may be facing. Participants and coaches will check in at least once a month. They will cover things to make sure your housing is still stable. Because again, if you're worried about where you're going to lay your head, job searching is not right there at the moment. Child care resources. Again, if your babysitter flake on you, if your babysitter is unreliable and you have to call in three times a week, you're not ready to work right now. So we're going to make sure that you have adequate child care. We also make sure that our participants have food assistance, educational resources for those of you that may want to go back to school or want to get your GED or take some of those classes, courses that Joycey mentioned uh, for uh, certifications. Kara offers CCA and PACE bus passes. Um, for those of you that may be interested in Clean Slate, we will give you a bus card. But once you start getting paid, you, you got you to gotta buy your own bus card. But we will give you a bus card up until your first full two-week paycheck. Um, Joycey also mentioned the financial literacy piece. We have a financial literacy coach and her job is to do nothing but financial literacy. Um, she will, and she is good. I believe she got a perfect credit score. Um, she will help you repair your credit, um, any assistance with filling out tax forms, saving and budgeting, also free income taxes for those that come to our program and not even those that come to our program. We actually have a community resource center down on 47th, right off Michigan, um, right off Michigan in the old Rosenwald building. And that is like anyone can use these resources, especially Clinetta resources there. Um, so going back to that real and lasting success, for those of you, again, if you want a car after you save up some money, if you want to move after you save up some money, if you got some messed up credit, that's not going to even matter right now in that moment. Um, so making sure that is all together. I wish someone would have told me about credit earlier in my life before I had to find out the hard way to fix what I had messed up. Um, so that is another added perk of being a care participant and not just a care participant. And I don't want to make this all about being a care participant, but just a service that we offer in general um, is fixing credit, filling out tax forms, saving and budgeting, as well as uh, preparing your taxes yearly. Next slide. So now we are in this placement part of the service delivery wheel. And I know many of you are like, I'm just here to get a job. I want to find out how you're going to help me get a job. So our placement team works with participants one-on-one -on -one to make sure you got a perfect resume. They will assist you with job applications. They will help prepare you for interviews. We have a dedicated team that this is all they do. And like Joycey said, we depend on each other. Like it's a different wheelhouse. For each portion of this service delivery, there is a dedicated team that's going to help you with that. Because, you know, if you have one person doing all of this, it can be hectic sometimes. But the fact that you'll have a, a team that's going to walk you through each portion of the care or journey is key to your success. So we will prepare you for your interviews. We have a volunteer program, an awesome volunteer program. And our volunteers consist of retired HR professionals, current HR professionals, teachers, you name it, they're in the volunteer program. And what they do is do mock interviews with you to make sure that you're going to shine in your interview, especially for those of us who may be scared of interviewing. I can teach an interview class all day long, but when I have to interview, it's just like I'm sweaty under my armpits. It is a whole different ball game when I have to interview for a job. And at Kara, even if you had a even if you are a staff person, we still got to interview for a promotion. It's just not like, here you promote it. You got to interview and earn that promotion. So I know how it is to be prepared for interviews. So that's something else that is provided at Kara. So we we also value employment partnerships over employment transactions. So there's that word partnerships as well. So as Joycey mentioned, we can get anybody a job. Like, here, get a job, you get a job, you get a job, you get a job. But how sustainable is that for your overall health for our, or more, uh, for the health of our mission and our organization to have transactions rather than partnerships? We want to make sure that we are in partnerships with Habitat, 
with Kronos, with Rivers, with the University of Chicago. That way, when they have some, some openness, they know that they can come to us for a trusted source of quality candidates because you have been vetted. You have been through our boot camp of training. You are ready to work. And they depend on us for that because they know if we're, they're coming for care or they've had all of this and they know they have the support to fall back on. So we definitely value employment partnerships over employment transactions because this is a partnership. And a lot of our employment partners get to know our staff on a personal level. So for instance, if I got, if Joyce got a job at University of Chicago and with your IDS check-in, your IDS will know probably your supervisor at the University of Chicago that a part of that one, that monthly check-in, how is work going? They can actually pick up the phone and be like, hey, Joycey dodged me this month for our monthly check-in. What's going on with her? And they will say, you know what? I'm glad you called me, but she's doing good or not so great as well. So we want to make sure that we're in constant communication with all of our employment partners and that they are a true partner and not a transactional partner. Next slide. Um, back to that coach. So you get a pre-placement coach. So you get an IDS while you are in job search, while you're actively looking for work. And then you will have a coach that's going to support you for your first year on the job. That coach is going to work with you for the full year. They're going to check in with you monthly. Um, so they're going to say check in and make sure things are going right on the job. So let's say, for instance, you're having a difficult time getting along with the supervisor and you just don't know, like you've done everything you possibly could. Your coach would be someone you would reach out to and just like, hey, I have the supervisor. Um, I've done everything I could. We're just not, we're not on the, we're not aligned in, you know, what I think I should be doing. Can you give me some tips on how I can get this uh, resolved? So your coach will play an important part for that, for, for that first year because your first year of employment is critical. Your first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days first year is critical. And we want to make sure that you keep that job for a year. And the reason we say a year is because participants do not graduate from care. And yes, I say graduate like school. You do not graduate from our program until you've completed one year on your job. Because people think like, oh, I got a job. Deuces, Kara, I'm gone. No, you are with us. And we are, and like I was going back to Kara, meaning uh, it's Gaelic for friend. We are a lifetime friend. We know some people. Some people still walk up to me and be like, TK, are you still at Kara? Like, yep, I'm still at Kara. Um, um, so we form relationships and bonds with pretty much all of our participants. And we even have an alumni association. So just like you have your high school reunions and all that fun stuff, every year we throw a picnic for everyone that made our great ball ceremony, meaning you completed one year on your job you are eligible to join our alumni association. That is a good tool to also network and just be connected to Kiara. When COVID hit, we had a lot of participants who lost their jobs due to no fault of their own. And they were able to reach back to Kiara and say, you know what, because they were still in good standing, they were able to reach back to Kiara and say, you know what, I lost my job due to no fault of my own, COVID, whatever, what can I do? So it's good to be a part of the alumni association and just to remain in contact with Kiara. Next slide. Um, career advancement. So back to this real and lasting success. So we want you to not only just be working for now, we want you to be a part of a, a long-term goal. So when you are approaching like the nine month mark of your placement, you have the opportunity to work with our advancement coach. And our advancement coach can connect you to other opportunities outside of the job that you're in now, you still got to make that one year, or we can talk about, hey, have you checked the job board at the job that you're at now? What does it look like? Do you want to apply for this job since you've proven yourself one year in this role? Do you want a promotion in this job? How can we support you in this promotion? And it's not all about work too. So your career advancement, meeting with our career advancement coach, also gives you access to scholarships. If you want to go back to school, if you want to get your GED, that is all a part of your career advancement. So we want to look at this long-term goal, um, but being a part of the career advancement at the nine-month mark is something else that Kara offers in your next step in your career journey. Next slide. 
this is just a quick snapshot and I'm looking at the time, Janelle. This is just a quick snapshot of some of the people that come to Kara. Um, like Joycey said, there is no one size fit all. We get everybody, we get it all that comes to Kara. So you can see somebody came to us with a bachelor's degree. Unemployment, homelessness does not discriminate. Some people fall on bad times. Some people actually walk away from jobs because they had to take care of a sick parent or a child or a relative. So there is no one size fit all. Um, but you have someone that came to care with a bachelor's degree. We have Christopher who was in his late 20s, early 30s. Um, he was a victim of a home invasion. So he ended up with a felony charge. Um, you, we have Emmett. Um, we also have Andrea who migrated, who immigrated from um, Brazil. I always want to talk about Andrea because Andrea came to Kara in 2012. It is now 2021 and she is still connected to Kara and now Andrea actually serves on our associate board. So she a board member. Uh, she's on the associate board of Kara and she came through as a participant. So this is just some of the people, a snapshot of who comes to Kara and where they end up working. So we have some people, somebody was placed at Indigo, ABM, CTA, and Andrea, state of Illinois. And I, I don't think she's at the state of Illinois anymore. I might have to update this. I think she's, she may be at the state of Illinois. But anywho, she started as a care participant. And now she went to school, got her bachelor's degree, all that since 2012 and since coming through CARA. Am I loud? I feel like I'm yelling. <laughs> Next slide. I talk loud. So what does it look like to come a care, to become a care participant? The admissions process is super easy. Um, what you need to be is drug-free with the exception of marijuana. But I will say for those of us that are on this call that may be smoking a little marijuana, you, we will accept you with marijuana in your system. But keep in mind too that some of our employment partners or employers in general have the right to not hire you with marijuana in your system. So just because it's legal, don't be like, don't think that any and everybody will hire you. So if you are smoking marijuana, I would highly encourage you to probably start stop smoking marijuana um, if you want certain industry focused jobs. You must have stable housing for at least three months um, because, again, we want you not worried about where you're going to lay your head in the process of job searching. If you are someone who is struggling with housing, we can connect you to our resource supporter coordinator and she will help you get some housing. You have to be able to uh, have reliable child care because, again, if you're worried about who's going to watch the kids and uh, Kara, we want to assimilate a real working environment because if you can't make it to Kara on time, how are you going to make it to your job on time? So you have to be able to commit to our program structure because again, we are guaranteeing our employment partners that we have vetted you, that you are ready to go. So it is a partnership. You have to be able to commit to some things that we need you to commit to. It's really, really easy to start. Uh, you need to just call this number, 798-3309, or you can go directly to our website and click out uh, an interest form, and admission specialists will call you back within 48 business hours. Um, we have cohorts beginning weekly. I will say if there's anyone on the call with a conviction, we do work with convictions. However, it cannot be a severely violent crime and we can go more in depth in that when you call. Um, if you don't know if your conviction qualifies as is, is, is not qualifies, I want to say qualifies, is a, a severely violent crime. But we can talk to the, talk about that offline. But these are just the basics that you need to do to get into CARA. And this is my information. Again, I'm Takora Martin. They call me TK. Um, this is my email address. If you have your phones out and want to take a picture of my contact info, or Janelle, if you want to go back to the last slide, and if someone want to take a picture of the admissions process with their phone, they can do it that way as well. That way they'll have it. If anybody would like, I can also share the slides out if you request them. Uh -huh. All right, thank you so much to Cora and Joycey. That was fabulous. Um, I'm so excited all about Kara. You do some really great work. <laughs> um, we do have a couple questions um, from some community members and just a couple things they wanna know. Um, if you do have any more questions, feel free to toss them, go ahead and put them in the Facebook chat. We'll get to those as soon as we can um, and we'll address all questions that we have time for. Um, so to s one of the first questions that we have is how long is the program? So when, from start to finish outside, outside of the year long commitment, 
from starting with um, Kara to potentially doing your first job interview and getting a job? What does the training look like? So it's no one size fit all. It's what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it is how it goes. So when you come to Kara, like you'll like if you call this week to enroll next week, you start your you'll have a stability screen and a job skills assessment. A few assessments are going to happen on the front end, attend some classes like Joycey was talking about those virtual classes. So you're pretty much determining how fast you're going to be placed. There is no time as to, we don't have a deadline to the program. The, 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 not, I don't want to say deadline, but it is until you get a job. So you're with us until you're placed into a permanent opportunity. Um, that's how long it's going to take. And that can be, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, it depends. Um, the average participant who comes to us, I believe, is with us probably for 120 days before they are placed. Um, and that's, again, it's all about what you put into it. If you're not attending classes, because again, we can't sell you if we don't know you. So if you're not engaging in programming, if you're not returning phone calls, if you're not attending classes, if you're slow to respond to what we're sending you, then we can't know you because our goal is again to get to know you so we can help you and to better place you in a job opportunity. So it's all about what you put into it. So if you're putting into it, you showing up and you attending classes and you're working on those five competencies that Joycey talked to talked about. Um, you get your resume done, you get your housing secured, you get your background checked off. There's a checklist. Um, and once you become send out eligible, again, it's all what you put into it. So I don't want to say there is. Uh, how long it's when it's what you put into it and you're with us until you get a job and the good thing about that is that some people may take a little longer because some people have some significant barriers to employment but it's not like oh you've been here for 90 days you gotta go we are with you until you are placed into a, a permanent opportunity so there is no timeline for real love that um the next question is with everything covid wise going on are things virtual, in person? Is it a hybrid system right now? What are those looking like? It is a hybrid system right now. And Joyce, you can chime in if, when if needed. But it is a hybrid system for the most part. But we do offer in-person training two days a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, downtown at our main campus, 237 South Des Plaines, from 9.30 to 12 o'clock. We are looking at adding lab time to that um, for individuals who may have who may not have access to a computer, you can do job search for the second half of that day um, of, on the Tuesdays or Thursdays. But right now it's just half days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then the rest of the week is virtual. One thing we do have, and I'll, I'll mention this too, um, for those of us that are on this call that have may been in college or just school in general, um, if you're familiar with College Blackboard, Kara has what we our own student platform and it's called Kara Central. All participants are given a unique ID number to log in and you can log in under your unique ID number and see what courses are being offered for that week and actually sign up for the classes. Then you'll be emailed a Ring Central link to attend the class virtually or if you're signing up for in person, your name will go on the list because we still have to track who's entering the building for COVID. You will uh, be sent confirmation for the in-person training as well. So, but you have control over it again about of the classes that you can be taking, but they're offered weekly um, and it is hybrid. Okay. And there's no cap on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Um, let me double check, but I think that might be all of our questions. I think you've covered just about anything else at the moment. Um, although just out of general curiosity, so you listed a couple of the organizations and companies who you partner with. What kind of sectors can I expect to be looking at um, when I come to you? General labor, customer service, food service, janitorial, and some admin. A high percentage of our participants do go into general labor and uh, food service and janitorial, okay. but we do have admin positions as well. Okay, awesome. Um, well, then that is all of our questions for right now. Um, thank you both so much. You were This was fabulous. I am very grateful for Kara and the work that you do. Um, to anybody watching or paying attention, if you would love to get connected with Kara, again, please feel free to reach out I will, and I will happily pass over the slides um, as well as what the recruiting looks like and to Cora and Joyce's emails. Um, I, Janelle, Janelle. Oh, 
just to Cora. Mm -hmm. Okay, no Joycey's. You'll you'll connect with Joycey <laughs> later. <laughs> um, and then you're also always welcome to reach out to the Austin Community Hub. So again, my name is Janelle, I'm the Hub Coordinator. You can reach out to us and we can help you get connected to Kara and other resources as well. Um, and with that, I did want to let you all know our next Hub 101 is up and ready to go. It is scheduled for September 21st. Let me quickly share our, our next flyer for it. So Hub 101 Next Steps um, with the journey forward, they work with community members who are re-entering um, and they connect you with all over across the board kind of resources, including trauma and wellness. Um, so if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out and register for the next one as well. This flyer will be going out. Um, but aside from that, that wraps up our second Hub 101 um, for August. Please feel free to reach out with any questions and concerns. And thank you again to Cora um, and Joycey. Thanks. You. Am I staying thank on? You. I'm staying on? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye, y'all, even though I can't see you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.